Uh, now recognize the chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, Mr. Smith. Let me uh, begin by thanking Chairman Kelly for, for allowing me here um, and for your leadership. It, we are incredibly grateful that you are at the realm of this committee um, with your experience, your knowledge, and your passion. And um, glad to have you leading our tax writing committee. Um, Mr. Plowgen, no one in the Biden administration has the power to write U.S. tax policy. The Supreme Court has said that the power to tax involves the power to destroy. It is among the most solemn responsibilities of government. And under the Constitution, it is strictly controlled. The power to tax demands the highest level of accountability to the American people, especially when masses of jobs are at risk. And while every member seated here today is accountable to voters, you and Secretary Yellen are not. I have eight specific questions on Treasury's engagement with the tax writing committees over the OECD negotiations, and I ask that you please just answer yes or no. Was Congress consulted prior to Treasury agreeing to a UTPR surtax that would allow foreign governments to tax the U.S. corporate U.S. operations of U.S. companies? We did receive input from Congress on the UTPR uh, during the so that's a yes. negotiations. That's a yes? We did receive uh, input from Congress, yes. Okay, I have followed this issue um, very closely over the past three years. And I don't think that's the case. I know that Treasury has never consulted with Republican members prior to a decision. And unless you would like to revise your testimony, um, please provide to this committee in writing the date of the consultation, the names of Treasury personnel involved, and the names of members of Congress that Treasury met with. Can you get me that information? We get input from Congress in, in many different ways. Uh, from Can hearings, you give me that information? From letters, uh, from consultation with staff as well. Yes or no, can you provide this committee that information? I do not have that information currently. So how do you know what you just testified before Congress is accurate? We receive input from Congress in multiple ways. Uh, as I said, What hearings, are those multiple ways and from what members? Through hearings, uh, through letters from Congress. What uh, hearings? Uh, the Treasury is, is called before House Ways and Means. Uh, the Secretary Yellen has uh, testified before uh, Ways and Means. Um, she testified and, uh, after she made the negotiations in regards to it. We receive letters from members uh, as well. Let me ask you another question. Was Congress consulted prior to Treasury accepting this recent offer by foreign countries to delay the UTPR surtax by just one year? Again, we received uh, input from Congress and from taxpayers uh, with concerns. You did not consult uh, with the chairman of the tax writing committee, so who did you consult with? We received input from uh, the tax writing committees on the UTPR and concerns about... Uh, no one from our committee on the Republican side. So was it only the Democrat side you spoke with? We speak with staff of the tax writing committee on a bipartisan basis on a regular basis. Did you, in regards to this delay for one year, did you speak to the majority in the tax writing committee of Ways and Means? We received uh, input on concerns about the UTPR and concerns about application of the UTPR to uh, parent jurisdictions, uh, especially in the early years of... You received letters the, from us, or two. but did you... Did you consult with us before this decision? We yes or no? We speak with the tax writing committees on a regular basis. Well, we I'm the chairman of this committee, and it's almost crickets. So you might want to do a little bit better in regards to that. Was Congress consulted prior to Treasury agreeing that the USD, US R&D credit would be disadvantaged versus the R&D credits of other countries like the UK? 
I cannot speak to uh, that decision. That decision, um, th this has been an ongoing process for multiple years, um, and that is a long-standing uh, distinction in the Pillar 2 rules. Yeah, it's pretty detrimental to U.S. businesses. Were you part of the negotiation? Uh, I joined, rejoined Treasury in October of 2021. Uh, the Pillar 2 negotiations have been going on since 2018. So since 2021, when you were in the negotiations, R&D hasn't been discussed around you? We have raised the R&D credit as an important issue uh, in the negotiations. Did anyone in Congress sign off on the decision to give generous, refundable corporate tax credits and Chinese state subsidies an advantage over more typical tax incentives like those enacted by Congress on a bipartisan basis? Yes or no? Again, I was not uh, part of the negotiations uh, when that decision was, was made. That's been uh, an issue in the Pillar 2 negotiations uh, that's, that's longstanding. Can you find that answer out for me? I will check on that and come back to you. I would love that to be submitted. Did Treasury consult with Congress prior to Treasury conceding that the U.S. guilty rule would not receive full grandfathering status as the only global minimum tax in the world? Yes or no? I was not part of the negotiations at that juncture. So once again, can you provide me the answer to that question with whoever at Treasury that was? I will check on that. Did anyone in Congress sign off on Treasury's decision to surrender U.S. tax revenues from guilty and subpart F because of the OECD's preference for local corporate minimum taxes? Uh, you're, you're speaking about the qualified domestic minimum taxes. Um, so we, uh, again, received input on that. The qualified domestic minimum ta taxes uh, are consistent with all international tax rules that provide the primary taxing right uh, to a jurisdiction when it taxes its residents on uh, income that I understand what it is, but my question was, is did anyone in Congress sign off on Treasury's decision? Again, we receive input from Congress in, in uh, many ways. Once again, I ask, unless you would like to revise your testimony, please provide to the committee in writing the date of the consultation with the members of Congress, the names of Treasury personnel involved, and the names of members of Congress that Treasury met with. Did anyone in Congress sign off on the decision for a 15% global minimum tax rate to replace the 12 to 13% rate that the OECD was considering prior to President Biden taking office? I was not part of the negotiations at that stage. Can you get that information for the I, committee? I will check on that. Was Congress consulted prior to Treasury agreeing on the scope of the pillar, one profit allocation, which skews heavily against U.S. companies while exempting their foreign headquartered competitors? I'm, I'm sorry, what, what was the question? Was Congress, once again, was Congress consulted prior to Treasury agreeing on the scope of the Pillar 1 profit allocation, which skews heavily against U.S. companies while exempting their foreign headquartered competitors? Uh, I don't think that it exempts uh, foreign uh, MNEs under Pillar 1, uh, so I'm not sure I understand the... the From my question. understanding, it does, so would you be opposed to it if it um, did not exempt those foreign headquartered competitors? Uh, sorry, Would Treasury be opposed to it? I don't think that it does exempt uh, foreign headquartered uh, multinationals in Pillar 1. So in regards to Pillar 1 profit allocation period, did Treasury consult with any members of Congress? We continue to consult with Congress about Pillar 1. Pillar 1 remains uh, open. There are many open issues on Pillar 1. So it goes back to my simple question. Um, you said, yes, you have. Um, I would love for you all to provide in writing to this committee who you consulted with, what, what members of Treasury that consulted with us, and what date. Um, if Treasury had consulted with Congress, we would have avoided the multitude of Biden administration lawsuits in the OCD negotiations. My final question, most of the observers are skeptical that China will ever truly comply with this OECD agreement. Secretary Yellen 
recently traveled to China to meet with the Chinese Communist Party officials? During that trip, was she able to obtain commitments from China that it would adopt the OECD agreement and implement it fairly? Secretary Yellen uh, did meet with her uh, Chinese counterparts and uh, in an attempt to uh, reset the relationship uh, with China, I, I do not know uh, whether they spoke about Pillar 2, uh, but the UTPR is an important part of Pillar 2 that ensures that China and other jurisdictions uh, do not gain an advantage if they do not adopt Pillar 2. And that's why the UTPR is an important part of Pillar 2. Um, it ensures, it provides an enforcement mechanism that ensures that Chinese multinationals will be subject to the same minimum tax as other multinationals. We know China's uh, really not that great of following rules and agreements. We've seen that with our country. Um, that's why I was hopeful that the Treasury Secretary, in her long visit to China, would definitely have talked to them about whether they would adopt OECD and the agreement and implement it fairly. I, since it's so important, I figured that would be top of her list. Whether by manipulating financial statements or by creating new state subsidies, China will find ways to evade these OECD rules and, and allowing CCP-supported companies to gain a competitive advantage against the United States is yet another failure in these negotiations by the Biden administration. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. 